Today I'm going to show how we can process large numbers of datasets of similar composition very easily in a batch refinement. So stay tuned. I measured four materials of slightly different composition six times each to be able to determine mean values and standard deviations, so I ended up with 24 datasets in total. And I can open them easily by opening Profex and selecting all the files in the file browser and dragging them to the main window of Profex. So each of the uh, data files is opened as a separate refinement project. So we start by identifying the phases and since these are synthetic mixtures I already know what to expect. So the main phase is rutile titanium dioxide. As you can see the peaks of the rutile reference dataset match perfectly. And we have a very small signal down here, low peaks of zincite. And if I go to the next composition, this was composition number four, I go to composition five, six and seven, you can see that the zincite signal increases so this is a series of, in, of rutile uh, matrix and increasing contents of zincite. So I will start the processing of these files by creating a refinement project for the first data set. So I, uh, as usual, I select my faces here and I click the add remove face button. I select my instrument, which was the RMSD8 ADS instrument and I have phases rutile already selected and zincite I check here. So now I get my uh, refinement control file with the two phases and I can immediately start the refinement. Now I need to optimize uh, my refinement strategy. Uh, the fit is uh, not yet uh, very good. We can see some pretty strong differences in, in the difference curve, mainly in intensities. So I will continue as we have learned in a previous episode of the tutorials. I will uh, just optimize my uh, profile refinement of, the, of mainly of the uh, rutile phase until I get a really good fit. And I will speed this up here. Uh, if you don't know what I'm doing or how to optimize a refinement, just go to one of the previous episodes where we discuss this in detail. I'm quite happy with this refinement strategy. The fit is very good. If you look at the statistics, chi square is at 1.27 and it is a massive improvement compared to the initial runs. We might be able to further improve the fit. Um, we have some intensity mismatch here, some profile mismatch here, but for now it's for the demonstration of the batch refinement it's good enough. So now I would like to use exactly the same refinement strategy for all of my other projects because it's the same phases just mixed in slightly different ratios. But instead of having to create a refinement project, applying the same tweaks to the structure files and to the strategy, this would be a lot of work uh, doing it another 23 times. And it's not necessary. I can simply apply the strategy, the, the control file and, and the structure files I created here in the first project to all other open projects. And I simply have to click this button, copy the current control file to all open projects and I will see a project selection dialog. I can select to which of the open projects I would like to uh, apply it. There are some um, quick uh, selection buttons. For example, I can click none and just select a few of them. Or in this case, I want to select all of them, click OK. And now if I raise one of the other projects, you will see that there is a refinement control file for all of them. And it's exactly the same control file as I created here, just with adapted file names for input and output files. So now all I have to do is run a batch refinement, either from the run menu, run batch refinement, or click the F10 key on the keyboard, or click the 
fast forward looking button here in the menu bar. It will again ask which projects do I want to refine in the batch. And again, I have the quick selection buttons. And actually we can skip the first one, the one we see in the background, because it's already uh, completed. So I can save a minute or two by deselecting it. And we start with uh, composition four, uh, data set one, and click OK. And as you can see, the first one started and all the others are scheduled for refinement. And it will r go through the list of schedule project and refine one after the other. And if I click this button up here, follow active refinement in batch refinement mode, it will always jump to the running uh, project so I can follow on the screen the progress of the batch refinement. If I go to, in one of the projects, I go to one of the text files here, this feature following the active refinement will be deactivated because I don't want it to jump to the next refinement project while I am reading or editing this file. So while I'm reading something here, it will continue processing files, but it will not jump to the active one. And as soon as I click this button again, it will start following the active refinement. And when it's all done, uh, my 24 files have been refined with the same optimized refinement strategy I set up for the first file. And now I can, for example, export the results, the quantities, which are part of the global goals, either by clicking this pie chart button or by going to the results menu, export global parameters and goals. I can again select which of the project results I want to export everything will be exported to the same file. I will choose all of them and give it a name, for example, quantities.csv, comma separated values file, save. And now I can open this file in a spreadsheet program, for example, in Microsoft Excel or LibreOffice Calc. Here's my file. And the field separator used by Profex export is the semicolon. So I deselect all others and only select the semicolon. Okay. And these are my global goals from all 24 refinements. So now it's sorted by, um, by sample, by, by data set. I have all the results, the rutile, the zincite quantities, the R values of the first data set, and then the same uh, results of the second data set and so on, but this is not, not very practical. So it's easier if I sort everything by parameter goal. So by this column D. And now I have all chi square, all goodness of fit values first, and down here all quantities of the data sets of, of zincite. And now I can do my statistics here. So these are my refined zincite quantities, always the average of six repetitions and the standard deviations. And I could plot them, for example, or do further processing with these results. These are the basic features of batch refinement in Profex. Now let me show you some more detailed information about uh, managing refinement batches. First of all, we can select multiple projects on the, in the projects list in the Profex main window. And if we have a selection and we start a batch refinement, these, are, these files we selected will be pre-selected here. So that's another way of uh, selecting the files we want to process. We can still use all the buttons here um, and do our, uh, another selection. But uh, anyway, sometimes it's easier to just select them here and they will be pre-selected and we can immediately click OK. So let me make a different selection now. 
We will process a few of them. Now we have a running batch. About four, five or six projects are scheduled and some are idle. These will not be processed. We can still run individual refinements. So while the batch is running, I can just start another refinement and this will be re refined parallel to the running batch. So now we have uh, two projects running at a time, one of the batch that's running and the one we started manually. If I select another project or multiple projects and click batch refinement again, it will just be it will not start refinement, it will just be appended to the running batch. So we can start an individual refinement like this one, but we cannot start a second batch. Instead, if we want to start another batch, it will just be scheduled for the running batch. This is how batch refinements work in Profix. It's a very powerful tool and you can literally process hundreds of datasets overnight. For example, if you measure the sample continuously to monitor a reaction in real time, or if you prepared a large number of samples to obtain good statistical information. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to let me know how you like these tutorials in the comments below and I hope to see you in the next video.